So in this section, modeling with statics, basically we're going to use the same type of thing we were looking at before, where um, if it's in statics, then the forces going up and down are the same. The forces going left and right are the same. They're balanced. I don't think we have any moments yet, but um, we just need to look out for uh, things where things may be smooth. Um, there may be things like pegs or beads or hinges. So we need to know, um, you know, what types of things, what types of forces we may or may not need to in, uh, to include in our working and things like tension in string or rope, uh, thrust if you've got some sort of uh, rod uh, or, or beam, something like that. So just be aware of these and make sure that you highlight them when you do the question. So we have here a smooth bead, so there's no friction, light and extensible string, so it doesn't stretch. We don't worry about its mass. And the string basically is connected here. It's threaded through a bead and goes back up there like that. So that red thing is the string, which has tension, which we're pointing there. And there always points away from where the uh, mass is connected to it. Uh, the bead will have its own mass. We don't know what it is, but its weight will be mg. And we have this force of 8 newtons pointing to the left. Now it says it's held in equilibrium. So what that means is we can go ahead and resolve our forces horizontally and vertically. They're going to be balanced. The only force which which isn't um, in that direction is the slanted te uh, tension. So we are going to work out what the horizontal and vertical components of it are. Now, seeing as this is an alternate angle, this will be 30 degrees, meaning that this side here at the bottom is going to be T cos 30. And at the side, let's rub that out, it will be T sine 30. So let's put it in T sine 30. So we're now able to uh, look at our forces. Let's start with the forces which are vertical. Uh, and going up, we have T sine 30 and T. And that equals the force going down, which is mg. Uh, two unknowns, T and mg. So we need to look at the forces uh, horizontally as well. And horizontally, we will have 8 equals T cos 30. Now, from this equation, we can work out what T is because T will just be 8 divided by uh, cos 30. So if we need um, a rounded value for that, let's just work that out. 8 divided by cos 30, 8 divided by cos 30, and we get 16 root 3 over 3, which is 9.237. So let's call that 9.24. So 9.2. Four. That's three significant figures as usual. Newtons. And now we can work out mg. Now I'm going to put the exact value of t in here. So um, that's going to be the 8 cos 30. So I'm just substituting t for uh, 8 over cos 30 plus. 8 over cos 30. Like that. that equals mg. So in fact, if I divide all of this, actually, I don't need to divide it. It's not asking for the mass. It's asking for the weight. So it's actually asking for mg. So 
that will give me the complete answer. So that gives 8 root 3, which is 13.9 to three significant figures. So let me write my answers down here. So T, 9.24 Newtons. And the weight of the bead, weight of bead, comes out as 13.9 Newtons. Yeah, so notice this asks for the weight, not the mass. So we don't need to divide by G to find the mass of the bead. So we've got a mass on a slope, we've got some string, and we've got a mass hanging down. So let's start by putting the forces on this diagram. So the weight of this is its uh, mass is one kilogram, so its weight is one G. We have tension pulling up away from the object. And again, we have tension here pulling away from that object. Remember, mass always points down. So this is going to be 3G here, and we're going to find its horizontal and vertical components in a moment. So that's going to be 45G or 45 degrees, and we're going to do the same here. We're going to find the horizontal and vertical components here, uh, and this angle is 45 degrees as well because we have a alternate angle here. So let's put these in. Let's put them in in red. So over here, we're going to have 3G cos 45. And here we'll have 3G sine 45. Here we'll have P cos 45. And here P sine 45. And uh, the other force that we haven't included just yet is the normal reaction um, of that um, object on it, so that particle on a flat surface. So let's start with looking at the forces going perpendicular to the plane. Now, what do we have? We have R that goes up. This is all in equilibrium, it says here, and that will equal the P sine 45 and the 3G cos 45 going down. So we're going to write all our equations and then we'll uh, solve them in a minute. Um, we're now going to look at the forces which are parallel to the slope. So that's going to be the P cos 45, which is going up the slope, and the T is going up the slope, and that will equal the 3G sine 45 going down, or parallel to the slope going downwards. And then we're going to look at the forces going this way. So we look at the other part of the diagram, and that will be the T that goes up will equal the 1G going down. So we need to start by finding P. Now I can do that by taking this equation and substituting it in here to find P. And then once I've done that and I found P, I can then substitute that into the first equation here to work out what um, R is for part B of the question. So let's just write down A part A. So um, P, well let's rearrange the equation first. So we've got P um, cos 45 equals 3G sine 45 minus T. Now T is 1G or G. So that's T there. So P equals this 3G sine 45 minus g over cos 45 now i would leave things in terms of g 
as long as you can. Don't change them to 9.8. Let your calculator do that. And sometimes it's even possible to give answers in terms of G. So let's work this out. So that gives me 15.5407. Three significant figures. P is going to be 15.5 Newtons. Part B, we want to find a normal reaction. So now I can take that exact answer that I've got here. I'm going to press the answer button and put it in here. So I'm now going to do answer times by sine 45 plus 3 times 9.8 cos 45. And I'll write that down and that gives us this answer. 31.777. So three significant figures. 31.8 Newtons is a normal reaction. And then in part C it's asking about what assumptions we've made. Well, we've made an assumption about the pulley being smooth, smooth and light pulley. We've made an assumption about the string that the uh, string is light and in extensible. String. I think that's probably it. We're told that the plane is smooth. So, yeah, we've made assumptions about the pulley and the string. Right. Exercise 7B on pages 1, 3, 4 to 137. You can do those now.